Welcome to Smoky Mountain Source, and today we're going to be talking about Dollywood and how it became the massive tourist attraction it is today. First opening is Dollywood in 1986. The Smoky Mountain theme park offers thrill rides, cultural experiences, and a clean family atmosphere better than any other park in the country. Dollywood has become a beacon for Smoky Mountain culture while raising money for the mountains that Dolly Parton grew up in. The 150-acre park hosts over 3 million visitors annually and is owned by Dolly Parton and the Hershen Family Entertainment. But there's a larger history here that needs to be talked about. To tell the story of Dollywood, we have to venture back to 1957. Two brothers, Grover and Harry Robbins, came up with the idea of a railroad-based amusement park called Tweetsie Railroad. After what was by all accounts a massive success, the Robbins brothers had a bright idea. They created another railroad-based theme park in 1961 called Rebel Railroad. This park, however, was built in the Smoky Mountains where Dollywood still sits today. In fact, the railroad Dollywood uses today is the same railroad the Robbins brothers operated years ago. Rebel Railroad was based on the theme of the Civil War. Visitors would ride the train and simulate a Union attack on the train and the areas it passed through. Confederate soldiers were the heroes of this attraction as they defended the train and its passengers throughout the ride. The railroad would pass replica forts, battlefields, and plantations on its journey to bring the Civil War to life. Rebel Railroad would alter the enemies every now and then so that they could simulate Indian attacks and train robberies. More than just a railroad, Rebel Railroad recreated an old Wild West city by building a general store, blacksmith shop, and saloon that patrons could experience along with the popular steam train. In 1970, the owner of the Cleveland Browns, Art Modell, purchased Rebel Railroad and rebranded it as Gold Rush Junction. He expanded the park with an outdoor theater, a new log flume ride, and a church. Modell retained ownership until 1976 when he became tired of the investment and moved on. 1976 brought yet another change to the theme park when Jack and Pete Hershen purchased Gold Rush Junction and renamed it Gold Rush. The next year, they rebranded the park as Silver Dollar City, which was a theme park they had already owned in Branson, Missouri. The new Silver Dollar City in the Smoky Mountains would become a sister park to the original. The new owners spent $1 million on new improvements and attractions in the first few years. Dolly Parton had always shared her heritage with the Smoky Mountains. She wasn't ashamed of her poor upbringing, but rather celebrated it and all of its cultural importance to Southern Appalachia. In 1986, she bought a share of Silver Dollar City. The park opened the 1986 season as Dollywood and never looked back. The benefits of having Dolly Parton as the face of a theme park were evident from the start. In the first year, she doubled the park's visitors to over 1 million. She added many new attractions including the Smoky Mountain River Rampage and the Back Porch Theater. As only Dolly Parton could do, she added a replica of her childhood home named Dolly's Tennessee Mountain Home and built a museum with stories, memorabilia, and more from Dolly's life and career. In 1987, the park continued to expand with a new section called Daydream Ridge, where the Mountain Slide Winder Ride, Sweet Dream Candy Shop, and Rainbow Factory Glass Shop were located. The famous Thunder Express would be the next big installment into Dollywood in 1989. It would sit next to Blazing Fury as another mine-themed coaster. Dolly even founded the Dollywood Foundation in the late 1980s to raise money to give books, supplies, and anything else local children needed for school. This idea would grow to become perhaps Dolly's greatest gift back to the world, the Imagination Library. The 1990s brought even more change to the park. It began with the Smoky Mountain Christmas Festival, a tradition that is still held today in the park. Visitors flocked to the park to experience the lights and Christmas cheer every single year. Next was the Smoky Mountain Sanctuary in 1991, which offered visitors up close and personal experiences with birds of prey and even bald eagles. More theaters, restaurants, gardens, and even a radio station were built by the time the 1992 season opened. The 1992 season was the first season that the park crested 2 million visitors in a single season. 
The mid to late 90s were a time when the parks saw even more exponential growth and really narrowed in on what their most popular attractions would be for generations. In 1995, the famous Jukebox Junction area of the park opened with 50s themed diners, car rides, and Kaz Walker's music store. The next year, in 1996, saw the addition of Thunder Road, a unique car adventure. Daredevil Falls, the infamous free fall log ride, would be right behind as the staple of the modern Dollywood. Daredevil Falls was the highest and fastest waterfall ride in the country at the time, with a 62-foot drop that terrified riders. Finally, in 1999, the Tennessee Tornado was born. The extreme metal roller coaster symbolizes a devastating tornado that ran through East Tennessee in the 1800s. Most of Dollywood seemed to be filled to the brim with popular attractions, both antique and modern by this time. The park, however, was just getting started when it came to expansion. Dollywood Splash Country would be the first major addition to the Dollywood franchise, as the water park was built right next to Dollywood on 35 acres of land in 2001. By 2004, the Thunderhead Wooden Roller Coaster would be open to the public. Named for a prominent mountain peak in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, Thunderhead is also a colloquial term for thunderclouds. Mystery Mine, a fan favorite mine cart roller coaster, would be opened in 2007. The 2010s should be known as the major investment era of Dollywood. During this time period, Dollywood spent more money on expansion and attractions than ever before. 2010 saw the introduction of the rope course, which included hundreds of various rope features and terrains to cross while harnessed high above the ground. The next year saw the massive barnstormer swing open. Then, in 2012, the Wild Eagle Coaster was built and became the single largest investment the park has ever made on a single attraction. The 2014 Fire Chaser Express Family Roller Coaster and the 2016 Lightning Rod Wooden Roller Coaster carried on the large investment era of Dollywood as they quickly became popular attractions. 2020 marked the end of the investment era of Dollywood and transformed into the expansion era of Dollywood. Dolly had always wanted to open multiple parks across the country and perhaps even build resorts to go with them. Well, her expansive dream came to fruition with the new plans to build a new resort near Dollywood. The Heartsong Lodge, as it would be called, is scheduled to open in 2023. Dollywood has long been known for its cultural events that are hosted throughout the season. Some of them include the Festival of Nations, Barbecue and Bluegrass Festival, Flower and Food Festival, Summer Celebration, the Harvest Festival, and the Smoky Mountain Christmas. The combination of Dolly Parton's celebrity status and her time spent as a cultural ambassador by way of Dollywood has given her a unique platform to use. She has not only used that platform to spread Southern Appalachia across the world, but also to help those in need. The Imagination Library, a Dolly Parton-founded charity, offers free children's books to families that can't afford them in hopes of eliminating illiteracy in Southern Appalachia and worldwide. The Dollywood Foundation has been responsible for many charitable efforts, including infrastructure improvements, hospitals, and other efforts meant to serve her community. Parton also partners with Keep Sevierville Beautiful, an organization focused on educating both locals and tourists on how to protect and preserve the land around the park and the national park. These are just a few of the efforts Dolly has made beyond Dollywood to benefit her community. She continues to find more and better ways to help those around her even today. Dollywood has no doubt become everything Dolly Parton ever dreamed it could be, and more. Her selfless nature allowed her to not only create an educational cultural experience in the form of the theme park, but also use that platform to better the lives of her community. The park serves as a cultural conductor that allows visitors to experience mountain culture in a way that binds them to the land they walk on. This is an experience you can only find in Dollywood. It is the missing piece of the puzzle in understanding how our ancestors lived in harmony with this land. The notion that if we learn from the past we can protect the future is not simply a war cry for the studies of the humanities, but it's a real tool that allows us to protect and preserve the land, culture, and stories in southern Appalachia.